Greetings, this is Charles Darwin and I'm here to talk to you about Here's Connie! And the Connie that I'm referring to is Connie Maculatum. Ever heard of her? Well, I hadn't either until I was reading through one of the popular books of the most recent Christmas season, Atlas Obscura. This is a compendium of all of the out-of-the-way places that you could visit when you go anywhere in the world and stay away from the tourist traps and instead go to places that nobody has ever heard of. The only problem is many of them are off-limits, but maybe you can get special permission or somebody to take you there. One of those places is found in Alnwick, Northumberland, England, and it is the Poison Garden. And this is a place where they grow, as you might guess, lots of poisonous plants. You can't just wander in there because they're afraid you might eat something and die, or you might steal something and kill somebody else. But if you're properly accompanied, you can look through the poisonous plants in the garden. And one of those poisonous plants is the poison hemlock, which the scientific name is Conium maculatum. But that's not what it says in the book. It says here, Coni maculatum. Now, how did that happen? Well, therein lies an interesting tale, because what Microsoft software, perhaps other companies as well, does is it automatically changes the spelling from something that is scientifically accurate to one of its approved list of words. And so, even though probably the authors and the editors intended it to say conium maculatum, it came out in print as coni maculatum, because perhaps even after they put it in correctly, and it changed it to Connie, and then they changed it back to Conium. By the time it came out, it had turned back into Connie, because Connie is on the list of approved words, and Conium is not. Sometimes it gets personal. This is kind of humorous, but sometimes it gets personal. I had a student last semester whose last name was Cotton, C-O-T-T-E-N. But when we tried to enter her grades on an Excel spreadsheet, it would always change the spelling of her name to Cotton O-N. And no matter how many times we changed it, it kept changing it back to the O-N spelling. We apologized to her. She said, oh, this happens all the time. Now, presumably, the IRS has it right. Her driver's license has it right, I suppose. But no matter what we did, we could not get our academic records of her to have her correct name spelling. Damn it. Her name is spelled Cotton, C-O-T-T-O-N. And that's just all there is to it, because that's what the software says. Now, this can be a serious problem. Science Magazine reported late in 2016 that 20% of genetics articles that have been published online contain incorrect names of genes because Excel automatically changed the spellings of the gene names into one of its approved set of words. So, an example that was given by Science Magazine was the gene Septin2, which is abbreviated Sept2, and as you can probably guess, Microsoft changed it to September 2nd. So, there are articles out there talking about the September 2nd gene, rather than the Septin2 gene. Note, 20% of genetics papers have these kinds of errors in them. Now, technology is supposed to be your servant, but Increasingly, it determines our framework of reality. You have no choice but to enter the information in, and then Microsoft will change it to whatever it wants. And once again, perhaps other companies do the same thing. Now, for centuries, people have had to put up with occasional and embarrassing misspellings. For instance, the 19th century report that a novelist named Edgar Allan P. had just published a new book is probably apocryphal, and maybe I just made it up right now. But at least the newspaper and the editors of the publishing companies had the option of spelling it correctly. I don't know if they would today. One of the plants that I study is an endangered bush species called Alnus maritima, the seaside alder, and the species name is maritima, ending in an A. But many of the websites have it Alnus maritime, and I know what happened. It's because Microsoft software changed it from Maritima to Maritime, because that must be what you meant. You certainly could not have meant Maritima. There is no such word. Well, uh, if I see that one more time, I think I'm going to scream. You see, I don't mind Microsoft underlining some of the words that it thinks are misspelled, so long as I have the option of leaving them as I know that they're supposed to be, so long as it's my decision. It's suggestions, that's fine, but it's the automatic silent and unstoppable changes that I hoot. This is Charles Darwin. Tally ho, and amen.